Good afternoon and welcome to the AB 1311 alternative hours, alternative schedule informal workshop today, June 6. This workshop is being held on GoToWebinar and is scheduled to run from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Good afternoon. I'm Amy Cameron, the Assistant Director for the Division of Recycling of the Beverage Container Recycling Program. Thank you to everyone joining us for this informal preliminary workshop on AB 1311 Alternative Schedule. On the panel joining me this afternoon are Jennifer Aikens, the Branch Chief of the Certification and Registration Branch. Margo Flores, Section Chief of the Certification Assistance and Review Section. Carrie Holler and Shelly Elrod are certification subject matter experts. Ben Kinney, one of our attorneys. And then Craig Castleton, Chris Chisholm, Vivian Cruz, all with the Cal Recycle Regulations Unit. Thank you panel members for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you later with questions and answer period. We're gonna go over just a few ground rules for today. There will be an opportunity for comments and questions after the presentation. Please confine your discussion to the current topic at hand and everyone's input is equally valid. We will be explaining the purpose of this workshop. We'll go over the AB 1311 statutes that are being implemented by the regulations we are developing. We'll spend some time explaining the two components, which are the reduced hour certification of recycling centers and alternative schedules. And again, we will provide an opportunity for questions and comments at the end of the presentation. The department is working on developing permanent regulations to set the process for recycling centers to apply for authorization to operate on an alternative schedule. The purpose of this informal workshop is to present our preliminary ideas for the implementation of this process. We are seeking public input to inform the development of these regulations. Recycling centers will not be able to apply for authorization to operate on an alternative schedule until the permanent regulations are in place. We are currently working on developing the language. The language will be based on the materials presented in this preliminary workshop, as well as the public input we received today. These ideas are under consideration. They are not in effect at this time. We will post the draft regulations as we progress through the rulemaking process. Once we finalize the regulations, they will be submitted to the Office of Administrative Law for a formal public comment period. After the public comment period, the regulations will be finalized for approval by the Office of Administrative Law, and once approved, they will become effective. To submit questions, please use the webinar menu box to the right of your screen. Please submit topical questions during the workshop in the comment section. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, questions that are not on topic will not be read. After we complete our presentation, we will read the questions. Additionally, if time permits, we will open for verbal discussion. Attendees will be muted until then. You may also submit additional comments or feedback after the walk, workshop. We will provide the email address at the end of the presentation. We'll begin by going over the authorizing statute. AB 1311 was signed by the governor on October 5th, 2021. The bill amended the California Beverage Container Recycling and Litter Reduction Act related to certified recycling centers. Those changes include adding bag drop to recycling centers, 
allowing recycling center appointment systems until January 1st of 2023, reinforcing the daily load limits, expanding eligibility for approval of reduced hours, and allowing certified recycling centers to apply for reduced hours. This workshop will focus solely on the last two amendments shown in blue. The bag drop recycling center operational standards will be addressed in a separate rulemaking and merits a full workshop. The appointment system authorized under AB 1311 has its own set of requirements and will sunset on January 1st, 2023. The daily load limits already do not apply to dealers since they are not consumers. The statute points to the existing regulations and do not need to be amended. We'll be discussing the reduced hours today. This provision is for a business applying for certification as a recycling center. Statute allows the department to certify a recycling center to operate with reduced operating hours if the recycling center is in a rural region. This is currently part of the certification application process. AB 1311 now includes eligibility to operate with reduced hours for non-rural region recycling centers if they satisfy statute 14571C1B, the needs of the community and the goals of this division will be best served by certification of the operation as a recycling center. To be certified to operate with reduced hours, a recycling center must work at least 10 hours per week. The application process is the same as the current recycling center certification application process. You submit an application with desired hours and additional information. The department then has 30 days to determine if the application is complete. Once complete, the department has 60 calendar days to approve or deny an application. To be certified to operate with reduced hours, the department will consider the following when making a determination. One, criteria, criteria for approval. To make a determination, we would look at what redemption opportunities already exist in the area. We interpret, interpret needs of the community to mean reasonable access to convenient redemption opportunities. To make a determination, we would look at what redemption opportunities already exist in the area. Number two, convenience zone recycler eligibility. A recycling center applying for certification in a convenience zone should be operational at least 30 hours per week with at least five hours per week other than 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. And number three, scheduled hours. The department must be notified if the recycler wants to change their scheduled hours. We'll now move on to the certified recycling center alternative hours. Section 14571C3A authorizes the approval of certified recycling centers to operate on an alternative schedule. An alternative schedule is defined as, alternative schedule means a schedule other than the schedule specified in subdivision A, or that may be required by the department pursuant to subdivision B, including reduced hours of operation. Section 14571C3B authorizes the department to create a form and the manner in which a recycling center can apply for an alternative schedule. The department will provide certified recycling centers seeking to operate on an alternative schedule with the form and content 
required by the department and the manner in which to submit it. The second clause provides two types of alternative schedules. Flexibility for small or family owned business and centers experiencing operational challenges due to natural disasters or states of emergency. We will be going over this part in more detail shortly. The department is authorized to set the criteria for approval of an alternative schedule, including setting a minimum number of hours that the certified recycling center may be open and any other requirement it deems necessary for a recycling center to operate on an alternative schedule and still meet requirements for subdivision D. Section 14571D requires that the department set criteria for the approval of an alternative schedule that is necessary to further the goals of the division and will not significantly decrease the consumer's ability to conveniently redeem beverage containers. As stated in 14571C3B2, which can be found on slide 14, there are two types of alternative schedules allowed by AB 1311. For purposes of differentiating these two types of alternative schedules, we will refer to them as type one and type two. Type one allows flexibility to small or family owned businesses. And type two is for centers that have operational challenges due to a state of emergency or a natural disaster. The alternative schedule is defined in the statute as an alternative schedule is a schedule other than the 30 hours per week with a minimum of five hours of operation occurring during periods other than Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The department must establish the criteria in order to authorize an alternative schedule. A minimum number of hours of operation must be set. Before authorizing a center to operate under an alternative schedule, the department must make a determination that 14571D is met. As we went over in a previous slide, for those conditions to be met, the department must determine that the action is necessary to further the goals of this division and the proposed operating hours will not significantly decrease the ability of consumers to conveniently return beverage containers for the refund value to a certified recycling center redeeming all material types. Alternative schedule type one, flexibility for certified recycling centers that are owned or operated by small or family owned businesses. This is the first type of alternative schedule that is allowed by the statute. This alternative schedule will be referred to as type one. For certified recycling centers to be eligible to operate on a type one, alternative schedule, they must meet the following criteria. We are considering a criteria for small or family owned business to be five or less employees. To determine this criteria for small and family owned businesses, we queried the average number of employees a recycling center has, and it was 5.5. This means 63% of program participants would be considered a small business. The proposed alternative schedule is fixed and set. 
Once approved, the schedule will be the recycling center's operating hours unless they submit and get authorization to operate under a different schedule. The recycling center must operate a minimum of 10 hours a week. Certified recycling centers with two or more locations must submit separate applications for each location that is applying to operate on an alternative schedule. Certified recycling centers applying to operate on an alternative schedule must not be in a convenience zone. Operators will be required to apply for an alternative schedule. Once the regulations are in place, the forms will be posted on our website or you can contact our certification unit. Staff will have 30 calendar days to review and approve completed application. The operator will receive an email notification of the approval effective date. If you want to change your hours, you will need to contact the certification unit. There will be no limitation on how many times an operator may submit an application form. We want to reiterate that the information presented in this workshop are our preliminary ideas. Recycling centers will not be able to apply for authorization to operate on an alternative schedule until the permanent regulations are in place. Now we will be going over some examples for type one alternative schedules. Example one. Recycler wants to be open fewer hours than 30 hours. The operator would submit an application for an alternative schedule form for type one and shall explain how a reduction in hours will continue to provide for the consumer's needs for redemption. For purposes of example, criteria that we would look at would be application is from a small business or family owned. The operators would still be open a minimum of 10 hours per week under the alternative schedule. There are adequate alternative locations. The alternative schedule is a set schedule. Since the operator meets the stated criteria, the request for this site is eligible for approval. The operator must submit another application if they request to reduce the number of hours or if the operator wishes to reduce hours at, a, at another location. Example two, recycler wants to close for 30 days. Type one is submitted because this is not based on an emergency or natural disaster. The application form is from a small business or family out, but it is operating under the proposed alternative schedule. The operator would not be open a minimum of 10 hours per week. This does not meet the criteria for 14571D or 14571C3B3. Since the recycler cannot be open a minimum of 10 hours per week under the schedule, the request for this site is not eligible for approval. Our staff will review to ensure that all requests meet the criteria for approval. Now we'll talk about type two. This type of alternative schedule is for recycling centers that are experiencing operational challenges due to external events. If there is a declared state of emergency or natural disaster that imposes operational challenges, a recycling center may reduce hours or may be closed for the duration of the event impacting the recycling center or its customers. As a reminder, this alternative schedule is referred to as type two. 
applicants for a type two alternative schedule will need to submit documentation that proves a natural disaster or state of emergency exists. Acceptable documentation would be the formal statement of a government agency or entity that a state of emergency or natural disaster has occurred or is imminent. This may be a copy of a news article, electronic communication from an agency, or other evidence that the declaration has been made or formal warning has been issued. If there is a declared state of emergency or natural disaster that imposes operational challenges, a recycling center may be closed for the duration of the event impacting the recycling center or its customers. The beginning and end date must be provided on the application. If closure is needed past the requested amount of time, a new application must be submitted. Eligibility for approval for a type two alternative schedule. The operator must provide documentation of natural disaster or state of emergency. The operator must explain the operational challenge that exists as a result of the event. The alternative schedule may begin at the time the qualifying event is officially warned or declared and is limited to continue no more than six months after the end of the event. The operator may apply within two days of the event, either before or after. The operator may request to reduce hours or cease operation within approved time period and all recycling centers are eligible to apply. Operators will be required to submit an application form for a type two alternative schedule. Once the regulations are in place, the forms will be posted on our website or by contacting our certification unit. Staff will have five calendar days to review and approve completed applications. The operator will receive an email notification of the approval effective date and end date. The operator may end the alternative schedule at any time by submitting a written notification. However, if you want to extend the duration of the alternative scheduling, remembering that no alternative schedule may continue longer than six months from the qualifying event, you must submit a new application there will be no limitation on how many times an operator may submit an application form. Again, just a quick reminder, these are preliminary ideas and preliminary examples. We are basing our draft language on around these parameters, but at this time, these are just content, concepts until the regulations are adopted. This is why we would like your comments and your feedback during today's presentation and after. Some examples of type two alternative schedules include, recycler closes due to hazardous air quality, documentation of recognized emergency or natural disaster, operational challenge to recycler and or the impact to customers, the dates of closure and reopening are provided, the application was sent within two days of the event. The request for this site is eligible for approval. The approval ends on the date stated on the application. Example two, recycler in a convenience zone is in the path of a wildfire. Documentation of recognized emergency or natural disaster operational challenges to recycler and or impact to customer. The dates of closure and reopening are provided. The application was sent within two days of the event. The request for this site would be eligible for approval. The approval ends on the date stated on the application. Example three, recycling center has closed due to staff experiencing illness from COVID. The documentation of a recognized emergency or natural disaster is provided, operational challenges to the recycler or an impact to customers, the dates of the closure and opening are provided, 
the application was sent within two days of the event. The request for this site is eligible for approval. The approval ends on the date stated on the application. Note, this request would not be approved if there was not a COVID-related state of emergency declared by either the local, state, or federal government. Regulations will be drafted based on the outlined concepts presented. Please keep in mind that these concepts are subject to change as we develop the regulations and consider public input. When they are ready, these draft regulations will be posted for feedback before we finalize. I'd like to ask my panel members to rejoin me on the camera for the next section of questions and comments. Now we will begin the questions and comments portion of the workshop. Please submit your questions or comments directly in the question box located on the webinar menu box to the right of your screen. Once we have gone through all the submitted questions, and if time allows, we will open up the workshop for verbal comments. Vivian, can you please begin reading the comments and questions related to alternative schedules? The first question that we received is, everything is everything today in today's webinar going to sunset on January 1, 2023? No, just the appointment only. Uh, portion of 1311 sunsets on January 1st, 2023. Once these regulations are adopted, then they will be a permanent fixture to the current way we operate recycling centers. Staff, did I get that right? All right. Thanks, Vivian. The second question states, regarding notifying power cycle for closures, our program occasionally has mandatory training and will need to close the buyback. Will we need to continue to receive approval? I am going to turn that over to one of our subject matter experts to answer. And if we don't have the answer, then we will get back to you on that. I think it would depend if you're able to operate 30 hours a week. Okay. I, I think we'd need a little more information. Thank you. Carrie, would you mind uh, shouting out an email address where this participant could um, email directly to the certification staff this question so we could get back to him or her? Sure. You can email DOR cert file room at calrecycle.ca.gov. Thank you. And thank you for the question. And we will get back to you if you follow up with an email. Any other questions, Vivian? Those look like all the written questions and comments at this time. OK. Um, now we can open up for verbal comments. Please raise your hand to be recognized and Vivian will um, call on you. At this moment, I do not see any raised hands. Okay, well, let's just give it one more minute as people uh, think about this. But in the meantime, um, we want you to stay informed. So if you have additional questions, comments, or feedback after the workshop, please email them to vivian.cruz at calrecycle.ca.gov. Please subscribe to the Beverage Container Recycling Program 
general information listserv for rulemaking updates. And the email is below. And for all of those who registered on this email, the, this PowerPoint was presented, was posted yesterday. Is that correct, Vivian? It was posted on Friday, I believe. So yeah, they have access to the, to the presentation. Great, so everybody should have the statute references that I mentioned, as well as these examples, as well as some email addresses to follow up with your comments and your thoughts. And once again, I just want to remind you, we're still going through the process. So these are not eligible for authorization by our staff at this point. Right now we're working on receiving your feedback so we may draft the language for the Office of Administrative Law. And if that's it, then I do have. Okay. So sorry, Amy. Um, for interrupting. I do have one raised hand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you, Lucero Arcules. Um, just please keep in mind that uh, keep your questions or comments topical to the subject. I will go ahead and unmute you. You're now unmuted, Lucero. Thank you. Um, if we're not considered type one, either a small or a family business, but we come across um, being, you know, shorthanded on employees for that day or for the month, or because we have experienced, um, you know, uh, not being able to find candidates that want to work. Um, a lot of people apply but don't show up. Um, so in the cases that we are shorthanded and, um, you know, we have our set hours that are posted uh, Monday through Friday, let's say from 7 to 4, 7 to 5, um, are we able to close 15 minutes prior without a notice or we have to stay open until the 5 o'clock mark? Or can we say, you know, five, uh, 15 minutes before we're closing the gates, working with the people that we have on site? um until five o'clock or 5 15 until they're done sorting or you know uh, recycling do we need to be do we need to notify anybody before that or um can we just take that upon ourselves that day if we're shorthanded for whatever reason i'm going to turn this over to margo to weigh in or if anybody else wants to jump in, please do so. <laughs> I, think I, hear, I think I hear sort of two different questions. Yeah. One is that can you be approved as a short term type one due to labor shortages or, or other sort of situations? And then I think the second question is, do you have eligibility to close a little bit early to uh, help to finish up your day on time um, at the five o'clock mark. So if, if that's correct, I'm, I'm still gonna turn it over to Margo, but I do believe it's a two-part question. Okay. Um, you, if you don't qualify for type one, then you're not eligible for the, the reduced hours. And so you would be expected to uh, maintain your posted hours as always. Um, so unless there's some other circumstances that I'm not aware of, that would be my stock answer based on the regulations. Carrie, Shelley, do you have anything to input on that? I can probably, uh, if you want me to. So Great. just, just keep, in, keep in mind that this is, it's a process. It's, it's not a day-to-day -day operational need. So it is an alternative schedule that you must apply for and get approval for. So that's okay. going to take some advance notice and for us to have some time to look at that and do it. So even if you are approved for an alternative schedule, which you must maintain those hours, you can't change them day by day. You have to keep, you can't close early under any circumstance. I don't see that happening under, under even these rates. Just looking at the parameters that the legislature uh, made for us. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Thank you.
at this time, that looks like the only written questions and raised hand. Great. Sorry, my, I apologize. Someone just raised their hand. Uh, Deborah Smith, I am going to unmute you. You're now muted. Hi. Okay. My question is this. We're in a rural area, highly rural. We're the only recycler in this area. And um, we're like in the convenience zone also, but we are finding the in the ability to find people to work extremely difficult. Um, I mean, this would be great if we could do this, but according to what I'm understanding, we would not qualify in any way, shape or form. Is that correct? You're saying you don't qualify because you're in a convenient zone? Okay. For for type one. Well, I, I, That's what I well, we're, we are type one. We're a very small business to begin with. It's just family, okay? And it and you know a couple of people that work the 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 processing line, um, and in at this point, I'm having trouble keeping people even three people to work on a daily basis because. We're in a very rural area. It's um, very much seniors and um, young, um, how do I term this, addicts and alcoholics. Um, <laughs> it's Kern River Valley and it's really small. There's like 30, what, 35,000 people total in the valley. We are the only recycler in the valley currently, but keeping people, I mean, people come in and they say they want to work and they'll show up one day and then never come back. And it's just, you know, I don't know if, 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 if we would even can, I know we would be type one for sure, but because of the location that we're at, because we have three convenience zones in the Valley and we service them, would we qualify at all? I'm going to step in. You you would you can reduce your hours, but you would lose your handling fees. Okay. Which and if I lose handling fees, I'm shut down. Yeah. Because right. I can't. We don't have any. The cost to get anything to processing costs us a lot more than the guy that lives down the seat from the processor because we have a 50 mile drive one way. And the price of the cost of bailing everything and prepping it to get it down there and transportation too. So if I lose handling fees, I'm shut down. So there's no there's no help for that, is there? Well, re remember these are just concepts. So okay. these are the kinds of things that we wanna hear. So even later after this um, presentation today, this workshop, maybe we, we can you can email us or get so we have more of the circumstances you're going through because there may be other recyclers in the same situation. And you know these these okay. concepts that we have are not set in stone, so we want to hear the, the problems that different recyclers may conceive that we, or perceive that uh, they will have if these go into effect the way we're looking at them. So yeah, we'd like to hear okay. more, more about I, what your situation I, is. Yeah, because I can't imagine that I'm the only one in this position. You know. I, I just don't imagine that I'm the only one that has this. We have ex we have you know additional fees just to get our product to a processor. First of all, that the regular average recycler doesn't have. Plus, even in this area, it's real small and it presents a difficult situation just to get people to do anything the way you want them to. Anyhow, but yeah, I'll be happy to send in you know sure. a bunch of suggestions, not suggestions, but you know the typical way we work up here and how it how hard and difficult it is to run on the regulations as it is but to add you know stipulations on that again it would be great if we could lower the hours if you know because we can't find people to work and right now we're killing the people that do come to work trying to keep ourselves open you know yeah, handling, um, fees, handling sure. fees have gone down um processing fees have gone down so it's really really it's really getting difficult to survive, you know, 
I mean, like, and I said, we are the only recycler up here. And if we close down, then there's nobody. <laughs> and I don't know what the Valley would do. I really don't. Um, but we're struggling up here, just so you guys know. I mean, I, and I know I can't be the only one. Thank you for your comments. And we look forward to your written comments so we can try and incorporate those into the regulation package if with the authority that the statute has provided us. But please provide us those comments written. That would be very helpful. All right, Vivian, any more comments? Let me, at this moment, there is no more written comments. Let me just see one more scroll. There is one raised hand, Greg Berner. I will go ahead and unmute you now. Vivian, this is Jennifer. I'm sorry, we're having a little bit of a difficulty with your audio. Can you not hear me? I, I can't. Is it just me or is anybody else having an issue? No, it's it's um, staticky. Um, All right. I'm not sure if you can see the comment. If you can see the comment, maybe you can read the comment. I thought it was a raised hand. Vivian, can you unmute the the participant with the comment, and then if he or she could either uh, could just read the comment to us verbally, if you wouldn't mind, then we would we would be happy to address it. Sorry for the technical difficulties. My apologies for the technical difficulties. Greg Horner, you're unmuted. You can unmute yourself now. Was it Ken Hawes that you unmuted? Greg Horner. Oh, okay. Greg Herner, could you please provide us with your comment or question? Oh, it says it won't unmute you. Let me try. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it just actually worked finally. Okay. <laughs> every, every screen's a little bit different. Welcome. Thank you. And sorry for the technical difficulties. Please. Oh, that's no, yeah, that's no problem. I think it was just the connection difficulty. It wasn't allowing it to unmute. So, um, so Greg Herner on behalf of the Can Manufacturers Institute, and I realize you have, um, you know, statutory construction you're trying to work with, but uh, we're, we're just calling for um, liberal interpretation of flexibility for centers. Um, we, you know, we, as the story you just heard of, about the challenges and things, um, we hope that Cal Recycle will provide kind of maximum flexibility to, to centers to try and, and make sure that we keep as many functioning as possible. And I know that's your goal as well, but I just, I just want to put that on record on behalf of my client. Thank you for that. Uh, we appreciate the comment. All right, I'm looking, I'm gonna do one last scroll um, and I will see if, uh, I'm not seeing any new uh, comments. Jeff Dunleavy, did you? I'm going to unmute you. It looked as though maybe you had a, a question, but perhaps we already read it, but I'll unmute you. And if we have already addressed your comment, please let me know. Okay, my apologies, it will not uh, work. I'm gonna do one last uh, look for written questions and then it looks like we will um, be finished for the day. And again, we apologize for any technical difficulties. The important thing to take away is please get us your comments in writing so we may try and incorporate them into the regulation package. We appreciate your time today. We appreciate you taking an interest 
in the beverage container recycling program, and we appreciate all that you do to help provide consumers access to redeem their CRV. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us, and we will talk and see you soon.